our meeting to order for January 8th, 2020, Select Board Meeting. Thank you all for coming. No. Um, so we have uh, our consent agenda to start things off with. We have minutes from August 7th, 2019, August 28th, 2019, September 4th, 2019, September 24th, 2019, October 9th of 2019 and October 16th of 2019 as well as October 24th of 2019. We have warrants to approve AP 2025. We have AP 2025S, AP 2026, AP 2027, and AP 2027S. We were supposed to have full-time firefighter appointments tonight, but we're gonna put that on hold until next week when the fire chief can join us. Um, we have a police department policy number 4.33 for body-worn slash in-car cameras. We have an appointment of COA van driver. We have a dispatcher memorandum of understanding for the select board to sign. We have um, 399 River Drive streetlight vote, which we can hold until after the consent agenda, take this right afterwards. And then we have a DPW water maintenance operator position, Wade Vandalowski. And Chris, do you want to say anything about that or uh, the, the, water op the water maintenance thing. operator position? Or yes, you want us to just, uh, you want us to set that off or just vote on it in the consent agenda? Yes, uh, yes. Hold it. No, it does, just no, vote. Does, okay, yes. okay, sounds good. Thank you. Um, all right, can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Any any other discussion? Were you, were you going to say anything, Molly? I, mm -hmm. I didn't know if you were going to say something else. You were just no, going to make a motion. Okay, yeah. and second. Okay, okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Except for uh, Wade. Okay. Water boy. Okay. All right. Um, so we have the 399 River Drive streetlight vote. Um, you're here tonight to discuss it with us, I believe. I am. And uh, so basically just a little background on it uh, is that this was something that was on the agenda back in December, I believe, but we had the address wrong, 300 River Drive instead of 399 River Drive. So we brought this up again to vote. Uh, David was not here for that vote. He was running late for that meeting. And um, Ms. Delmino wasn't here either. It's Delmolino. Delmolino. Yeah, I knew okay. I was going to get it wrong, so no, thank you for okay. correcting that's me. That's okay. You're not the uh, first. <laughs> yeah. You won't be the last. <laughs> um, just to, you know, give her side as well. So in our uh, board docs here, we have two pictures that she has forwarded up to us. Uh, the River Road JPEG and River Road JPEG 2. That just, are just an aside. It's yes. River Drive. River Drive. You're correct. River Drive. It's, the, the pictures are labeled River Road. So uh, I'm sorry about reading that. the name I of the pictures. That wasn't but me. It is. That wasn't River me. Drive, yes. Um, so the, the pictures are there if the board would like to look at them. Um, and basically, in the past, we had voted, you know, this has been an ongoing process to have the street light here. Um, but we had voted to keep the street light um, at this location. Uh, it was installed there in, I don't know, earlier in the summer? August. August. And then the request was made to remove it, um, but the board had voted at the time to keep the street light there because of insurance reasons, because of the, the safety implications along that stretch of the road. So. I don't know if you'd like to say anything or I would. Yeah. I would. Um, and um, the concerns I have are around my uh, not being involved in the whole process. Um, uh, you've got the um, uh, letter that I sent to you. Everybody's seen yep. that. That's in here as well. Yep, I yep, yep, that. yep, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. The genesis was a driveway conversation, and um, the next thing I knew, the board had voted it. And so I made. Um, and just to be clear, that's when we voted to put in the street. Correct. Line, correct. You voted yes. to put in the yep. street light. Mm -hmm. So uh, prior to that, um, David uh, Nixon had done a site visit uh, 
but didn't, nobody contacted me on that. And um, Mitch didn't follow up from the driveway conversation uh, to say, hey, I'm going to the select board, you got anything to add? Not that, that he had to, or not that he had to, but there were opportunities for conversation. And then my new best friend here to my, <laughs> to my left, um, you know, I sent four emails to DPW with concerns about the light with no response. And then the next thing I knew, uh, you know, the light, th that was after you voted. Mm -hmm. um, the next thing, the light goes up. So my premise is that the light should never have gone up to begin with. I don't believe that you have um, enough documentation for the public safety concern. And it shouldn't have gone up to begin with. Uh, the the um, uh, light diffusion from the street light itself is secondary to it shouldn't have gone up to begin with. The two photos that you sent us, are those current since they lowered the light? No, they're not. Those were the original height yeah. of the light? And, and let me just, I in the memo, <coughs> let me just say about those that I said, uh, the glare, yes, the glare is definitely exaggerated by the fog. However, it does outline nicely how the, these LEDs throw light. And yes, fog is a given along the river on many an occasion, but not a constant. The pictures are an accurate representation of how the light looks in the fog and the snow, though. The LEDs, unlike the sodiums, you're the, you, you probably have learned, learned this, they throw light out. So what I see out my window is, you know, the big glare. So, but that's secondary to my original premise, with, which is the light shouldn't have gone up to begin with. David, um, one of the things that seems to have come up because of this is that it doesn't appear that we have an actual policy kind of guiding how we go about deciding to install um, a street light. So is that, well, first of all, am I, am I right that we don't have a policy? And then number two, if we don't, is that something that we should have? Well, we don't have a policy per se, uh, just to reconstruct the, um, the sequence of events a little bit. Um, the police department did meet with Ms. Uh, Dunlino to talk about her concern that there were traffic accidents at that location. Um, the police department reviewed um, the traffic accident uh, information, determined that the, yes, that there was a credible concern for public safety in that part of River Ride Drive. Um, and that uh, in consultation with Ms. Domolino, a street light was suggested and was presented to the select board as a, uh, as a viable safety improvement. So uh, no policy per se, but a practice of if we're aware of a safety concern, we bring it to the select board for appropriate action and debate. Mm -hmm. If it is if something that other, I mean, there must be, I'm just thinking that it would seem something like that would, just like we do for licensing where it goes and it gets sign-offs from different departments that maybe public safety and the DPW would go ahead and do something and sign off. It, it's not going to rectify this situation, but I'd like to prevent this sort of thing from happening okay. in the future. But that's what we've always had in the past. Somebody has brought forth some concern. We've always had DPW. We've always had police look at the areas, whether it be four corners or a three-way or, I mean, we've had many areas in town where the police have chimed in on whether or not there needed to be a decrease in uh, speed limit or a light or the four-way corners or whatever I mean we've always involved them uh, with any concerns of a citizen and I think we've involved the DPW so I mean I think that's been our policy you can call it a policy it may not be a written policy I said but we do have people that if you have a concern then we have the DPW and we have the police department uh, look at it for safety I mean we've always done that I'd be happy to put one in writing for the future just because <coughs> I've been talking to Eversource and some of the surrounding towns, Amherst and South Hadley mainly, about upgrading some of the other lights in town. So, but really it's, it, it would be very close to what we do now. It's just that it would be right. It would be formalized, yeah. The difference. Um, but one kind of point of order is that uh, 
the town does have the ability to put a street light on every pole or no pole in, in, on a, over a public way throughout the entire town without any public notification or any public hearings. It's, uh, from what I understand, the public hearings that we do about the lights are kind of a courtesy. So we, we took out many lights, lights years correct. ago. Right. Yes. Now you know that. I mean, we used to have lights money. everywhere, yeah. but we yeah. save on money. We took out lights and just had them at intersections there's, there's and streets. Still, yeah, and there's still some dark places that, that could use a light. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we may need to look at that. Yeah. And I did talk to a couple of South Africa guys to myself. I don't know. <coughs> They've had a, quite a few complaints about the LED switch over also with the glare. Glare is twice as much as the incandescence. So. If, if I may, I'd like to go back to what uh, David Nixon had said. I want to be very clear that I did not request this light. This conversation came about after an accident where uh, Mitch came, he came by to help pick up the debris because DPW, my new friend over here, refused to do it. Um, but the conversation was not one where I said, oh, I want a light. That did not happen. Mitch brought it up. I initially gave him the information. I looked into it after I'd had um, a possible break-in at the house a month ago and discounted it. I did not want the light. Um, and, it, you know, he said, well, what about your property? I said, well, you know, what's it going to hit? The trees are all going to be all gone. It's going to hit the porch, and I could use a new porch. So I did not request this light. I, you, you know, there's just no two ways about it. Uh, there's no, show me my application. Show me in writing where I've requested this light. Show me where, where uh, I, I mean, I can show you where as soon as I, I, I found out the light was approved, I hustled and I made, what, four, five, six attempts at getting more information about it. I did not request this light. And I don't think that there's a safety hazard there. there where the light is, there was, there's been three accidents in the last 10 years. One gal swerved to avoid a woodchuck. One uh, was bad road conditions, and then the third one was the accident that happened in February. Three accidents in 10 years. Well, now that the light is up, though, we have a responsibility. It's a safety issue. We can't take it down for insurance. I'm going to make a motion that we retain the light at that site. That's my motion. Okay. Is there a light? Is there still a light? Second for discussion. Thank you. <laughs> is there still a light by the the old 47 Road or at the, the old at the corner? Yeah, yeah and then house? also one at the end of our driveway. Let's yes, see. there are two lights there. We we pay for those lights. Oh, those are yours. To, to the extent that there, uh, I ever recall a policy, there were a lot. As Joyce said, there used to be a, a lights on lots of the poles. Yeah. The policy came in as to which ones you're going to remove. And then uh, homeowners had an option to say, wait a minute, no, we want it in front of our house, yeah. but you, but we had to private pay it. And I don't know that that policy has ever been visited, it has revisited. Been. It has and been. perhaps as you're revising the policy, that that ought to be revisited. If, yeah. if, if individual homeowners have chosen to light their corner or place that, um, no. that there could be. That, that's still active because there's still people who want a street light and mm -hmm. actually turn the street light into their property, not on the street. Yep. And they're actually facing the homeowner's property huh. or the business's property, mm -hmm. and they're paying for the light. The only difference is as of, I think it was last summer, Eversource changed their policy, yeah. and now they will not install a street light, even if paid for by an individual, unless it's on a privately paid for pole. If it's huh. over a public way, because I've tried to put one in front yeah. of my house that I volunteered to pay for it. Okay. And uh, they said, no, no way, no how, you would have to put another telephone pole behind the telephone pole that's already there. And I said, that's ridiculous, <laughs> but uh, why? And they said, that's just our policy. We changed the policy. There's nothing we can do. And yeah. I said, okay. But our so lights are different than. Yes, yes. Or yeah, our lights are different than. You have so the older style. Like yeah, the, they have the, so yeah. Yeah, the yellow issue. So if, if I can just go back to say, that I don't think you have uh, the documentation to say that this light is there for safety reasons. And I outline nicely some of the other things that you could do that, um, is Mike Mason here? That when we had that meeting, he was fine with that, other than this whole insurance thing that gets brought up. 
And I would say, if you didn't have the documentation to begin with, you don't have it now just because you put the light in. You didn't have it to begin with. It shouldn't have gone up to begin with. And, it, and you don't throw good money after bad. It's still costing the town money. You could take that money and put it towards other things that are needed much more in the town than that street light. It's not, it's, it shouldn't be there. I'm gonna ask one more question of Chris. Just have we cleared any of the brush in that area that you know of? Yes, Mr. Chairman. We have the um, Mr. Chairman. Uh, if you allow me, can I can I kind of uh, in a way defend myself? Yeah. I, I, <laughs> oh, poor God. The, uh, no, we can only ask you questions. Yeah. The, <laughs> the the incident happened right before or around the time I came in. Mm -hmm. So. It wasn't that I was I was ready to play the accident. I have always cleared, so that's why. But I don't think she knew that when I came. So I, she, she just said so to me that tonight. I that I that when this didn't happen, I didn't show up. So, so when, so that was one of the first is um, uh, requests that I took over when I came in. And if I if I recall, Mr. Chairman, um, the police called us. We went there a couple of times both day and night, and also I think the selectman also went there to take a look at it. And <coughs> the, 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 what I was told was because of the accident, the homeowner complained that because we didn't have light there. The homeowner that was did not complain. Uh, okay, well, that's okay, well, let me finish. I think when you're speaking, <laughs> I allow you to speak. Well, it keeps uh, getting repeated, so oh, it gets taken as true. That's okay, no, and it, I just no. Like to say it's not true. The board did not <laughs> take it as true. I just, I'm telling you, you when you spoke, yeah. I kept quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you yeah. can give me that courtesy, so I can address the board. I know, so I, and then we went there both during the day and night, and if I, and then we came before the board. Even the town administrator went there also and spoke to the homeowner. Now, there was also, there's also about two or three poles from this house. We have a, a street line, and it, and then the I was told because uh, of the end of street which this house was, the corner they needed a light, and then the police also recommended that we should put light. Then we came before the board, mm -hmm. and then he went through that process. I was authorized to get in touch with Eversource and we did that process. All of a sudden, before Eversource could come in to take a look at the location and get us the light, we, we got an email that the homeowner doesn't need the light anymore. And uh, one, it was, it was not I who could stop that because the board authorized that. But two, Eversource was already in the process. So I spoke to the selectman, and he could. He said, "Let's safety is involved, the police is involved. Even if the homeowner refused, he doesn't need the light anymore." And I don't think he or she can stop that because we've gone through the normal protocol, and the board is the only one I think can have the authority to stop that. And we have to come before the board, so the light wasn't stopped. Also, Mr. Jeremy, if you recall, after the light was installed. The homeowner also made a complaint to the police. So we went back to see how how bright the light was. And Eversource was talked or called upon to see if they could adjust it. And they have they have they have done that. Mm. So that is why I said Mr. Chairman figured allow me to please explain myself. Mm -hmm. So I and I, I agree with the board. I also would recommend that the board should let the light be where it is. Safety is what's most important, regardless of what part of time it is. Do we have something from the insurance company? Yeah, so I talked to both the insurance company and to our uh, attorneys, and the basic, you know, they don't like dealing with hypotheticals, so take this uh, information as a response to uh, hypothetical, but if we've identified, if we've received a complaint about public safety, if we've done the homework to identify that in fact the complaint was credible and that there are accidents in that stretch of road and that we've taken a corrective step recommended by the police department and the DPW by installing a light and then if we should remove that light um, then yes there is some risk that there is a liability <coughs> issue with the town but if there should be future accidents at, at that location. Any more questions uh, from the board or guys? What, 
What does illumination look like now that they had lowered it? It's not bad. But I still go back to there's no need for the light to be there. That that if you look at the information, you have three accidents in ten years, two in the daytime. That doesn't say to me you need a street light. And there's plenty of other things if you really feel it's a safety issue that you could do. And it's outlined in there. The police could run radar. You could cut the brush across the street. Uh, there's uh, put some reflectors on the poles. That to put a street light in, I think, is wrong. That just because you made a mistake to begin with, you shouldn't keep throwing good money after bad, so to speak. Well, it shouldn't have been there to begin with. And and we've had this discussion. And as I said, you know, other than you know this in cloud about the insurance but the cloud about the insurance wouldn't be there if you if you uh, take a second look at the information and your your uh, the data that you're looking at to make the decision that you know you may make a different decision if you take a better look at it as good as we are sitting here we take that light down there will be an accident there the next day so i'm encouraging us not to do that <coughs> at this point okay so your motion joyce was to keep we, this steeple uh, the street light there especially Sorry. since they've adjusted it mm -hmm. the lighting is in better form for everybody i would suggest that we keep the light there okay so although okay. oh, can we one last comment yep well so i've been back and forth on it uh last night i decided to drive there at about 11 o'clock at night and just to see what it looked like. Plenty of free time. So, um, so uh, what I noticed was that when I'm heading north on River Drive, my car headlights coming up the road shine all the way across your house for several hundred feet of road travel right in your windows. And then as soon as my headlights went off your car, your house was back in darkness, so the light wasn't really affecting the house. And I understand that you don't want to look at it, and that it, the LEDs are different in that um, they they uh, the the light is a projectile versus a um, haze, uh, and, and so it's not it's how it's what you see when you look at the light. You'll see when you get them out here, um, and I, I think that you should listen to what uh, you know John's experience with. Uh, look and listen to South Hadley. Um, a lot of towns um, have installed the LEDs and then taken them out. Uh, the they, well, there was complaints, but none of them have been removed. They've all been adjusted. The, one, yep. the people I spoke to in South Hadley said they had adjusted them all, and not removed them. Yep, they're and not. They, it's not a one uh, one off deal. There's, yeah. um, you know, you got to look at the Kelvins. You got to look at the range, like the light that's up there. Now, it, it's better since the last time that they came in terms of what I see. But it, what it does, it lights up two, you know, the uh, Tugan's potato field and, and the yard over here. So there's all this light that is now going south versus coming north. So yes, it's be, uh, it, in terms of what I see out the window, it's, it's you know, certainly much better than when it was put up. When it was put up, you know, the cars coming southbound were hitting their brakes when they would come upon it because it was yeah. blinding to them. So so there, it's not like the lights that you see out there and you have to have the full range of effect uh, I, to, to really look at them. That, that was my second statement. I've traveled through South Alley since they put the lights up and I have slowed down myself, Adam, because I didn't know if there was an accident and I missed the blue lights and the red lights or if it was just a street light. That's, that's how bright they are. Well, so that blue, that, it, yeah. you have to choose the, yeah. the color, the blue, the yellow, yeah, that's what we should put those on our speedways then. That would be a yeah. 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 <laughs> The other piece yeah. that, I mean, I might as well, as long as we're just talking about it, but um, some of those lights yeah. are equipped yeah. with cameras. And that has really gotten some citizenry up in arms that the lights are installed with cameras with facial recognition. Um, so make sure that you are no, not in Hadley, just to be clear. Make sure you're fully inside. vetting what you're getting um, okay. when you look when you look at it. Yeah. yeah. And I, but I would like to see us um, 
memorialize this as some form of written policy. I'd be happy to yeah. put it in writing and bring it back to the board if, that, if that's okay with you. And I made a query to the STEM network. Uh, if anybody has any policy, please share. And would that be a bylaw <coughs> or would that be just no, a policy? No, it would just be a written policy. So okay. Yeah. Just our own internal policy so mm -hmm. we, don't, yeah, we don't get a piece from the fire now. department, a piece from the police just department, written. a piece from the police And most the policies, yeah, most policies okay. include the whole uh, be a good neighbor yeah. and notify the homeowner. Um, part of the problem here has been the lack of notification to the homeowner and the difficulty in being able to be heard here so that you're hearing me now after way after the fact when had you heard been able to hear me at the very beginning then you might have made a different decision so uh, you know my point is that just because you know you don't have the capacity or you didn't have the capacity to for me to be heard doesn't mean what I have to say now isn't as uh, important thank you all right all those in favor Aye. 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 Uh, Yes, oh. I, we <laughs> okay. we'll leave it there. Yeah. We'll see how it works. Okay. Maybe it'll burn out quickly. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and they won't fix it. Okay, let's move on to public comment. <laughs> <laughs> Are you here for public comment? Yes. Yes, okay. Uh, just keep it to three minutes, and we have a 15 minute period. So okay. go right ahead. I'm Jeannie Armstrong. My husband Stephen Armstrong. We're lived in Hadley for about 40 plus years and lived in Huntington Road. Stevens asked me to be the spokesperson tonight for the sake of brevity. We feel very strongly the need to deal with the climate crisis by assessing and lowering the carbon footprint with life that we need. We've installed uh, photovoltaic um, solar cells on our home and then we thought well, the next step might be to see is there some way we could work with the town to try and get a handle on what's the town's carbon footprint to, from your energy use, as a, our energy use as a town and our buildings and equipment and vehicles. And I looked them up, um, and have, it's a good website, by the way, uh, and they had the master yeah, plan there. <laughs> and I, noticed the <laughs> I noticed the master plan, perhaps someone said it'd be nice to have more solar and wind power in one of the public sessions, but there's not actually a statement on behalf of the town's desire or intent to get a handle on trying to lower the carbon footprint of the town as a functioning entity. Mm -hmm. So is that correct that as at this point there's not really a, f a formalized statement or a intent to get a handle on that? Is that kind of the situation where we are? There is, as far as I know, there's nothing formal of what our carbon impact is now. I don't know if, David, we have any... No, we do have a bylaw about the windmills, I think, that they are not... I'm not sorry, I'm not hearing sure what you're saying. Uh, I think we do have a bylaw about the windmills. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember a bylaw on the windmills. I, I do actually is have that a wind zone map of Is that? Um, I, I thought it had something to do with the, the height of the windmill. It was along the same lines as that. This would be oh, like yeah. kind of but this is the more, windmills are yeah, sort yeah. of a tool to be coming back to say well, the a bigger <laughs> look. At what you're talking about is there was a couple of local citizens that had yeah. windmills that they had put up to uh, okay. Henry Pollen, uh -huh. and that's how it all started, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, I, that happened okay. again no, no, 25 no. years ago. <laughs> that's how long ago it was. So I, don't hold me to it, but I'm, I'm sure we can check into it. Well, would, you, would you, as a, as a select so board, be interested in having a crew or a task force to try and get started on trying to assess what the town's carbon footprint is now, just the way we're operating as a town, and then perhaps look at is there any way to reduce? I mean, reduce I think it, personally, I think it would be great to have a number of what our carbon footprint was, so we knew where it was as a benchmark, and then see if we can reduce it somehow. I mean, no. we're especially, like, we're just installing the, putting in the new library and senior center fundraising effort right now to put solar panels on the library, so that would be a source of municipal PV. Mm -hmm. um, so there, there are things we're trying to do, but I think we're also cost conscious of trying to sure. keep everything yes. else. Well, we're volunteers. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, were you aware sure. of this presentation tonight? Stay yeah. with it, please. So <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. you're going to want to stay just a yeah, little yeah. while. Okay. Okay. Because, um, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to put out maybe a request where you're interested in doing 
doing something, and there have been some people who said they were interested. I wondered if we could, <laughs> knowing that you're interested, yeah. I wondered whether Stephen and I could perhaps get from David a list of the people who expressed interest, and our next step might be to call yeah. together and see if we can get a committee or a group that want to work on this. Yeah, I, I announced I wanted to form a climate change committee when I became right. chair, uh -huh. and I never got it off the ground, but I got, I got people that are interested in joining said committee, so oh, I could give you some information if you're interested in trying okay. to get it so, rolling. So would we decide next step would be just bring the group together, just see what our shared interests and capabilities are. And I don't know if, you, if you, we could schedule it such that you could come, that'd be great. Yeah, but yeah. It does seem like it's something the selectmen would want to be taking the lead on and kind of supervising and getting reports from whatever we did. Yeah. Did you? David has a, he yeah, like so this is a very complex subject and we've been working on the energy issues for many, many years. And We've had many successes that we can share with you. Uh, it would take a whole evening to talk about what we've done in terms of uh, mm -hmm. solar offsets, uh, renewable energy uh, production in the town of Hadley. I'm more than happy to talk with you. You have my card. Uh, and I know that uh, Christian did propose when he became chair that we put together a climate committee. Uh, we spent all day yesterday, and thank you very much for taking the leadership on that, Chris Okafor. Thank you. Looking at um, municipal vulnerability plans having to do with climate change, uh, and we're preparing a grant which will be submitted uh, this spring for the implementation of mitigation of uh, the worst things that climate change may uh, do to the community. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot to say. Uh, and very happy to talk with you about that. One of the and there's a lot to do, too. So I think well, what you're thinking about is one thing, this is another thing. So there's a lot of, when we start well, talking you. about climate, there's a lot of one thing, areas. So. When you start an effort, you can give yourself credit, too, because it doesn't hurt to have the townspeople realize that you've already taken actions on something mm -hmm. to get some new information. And perhaps we noticed that Helio got a grant helping mm -hmm. uh, work on reducing their carbon footprint. So part of what we might do is just find out what's out there that the town could tap, assuming you're interested in it. Thanks, I know you're yeah. running late. So why don't we do this? If I connect with you, David, and you, you can give me the list of the folks who yep. are interested in trying to set up a meeting when you could come. Yeah. Doesn't, it isn't that you'd have to come to every meeting, but it's always nice to have the board. Yeah sort of show first off that, that, he's, that we're on your radar screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that sounds great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you yeah. Much. Thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And, and please stay for the presentation. Yeah, yeah we, can, so. we can, we uh, can, you'd like to stay. Are you ready, yeah. Allison, to, yeah. oh, you want to introduce yeah. me? Okay, yeah. If I can. Go right ahead. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, um, I am, I'm Annie McKenzie, and I'm the superintendent of schools, and my job is to introduce this brilliant young lady, Allie Markowski, who's behind you, and she'll get up to do a presentation in a moment. And Allie is a junior at Hopkins Academy, and um, I want to do justice to her efforts, so I'm actually going to read from notes. I don't typically do that, but she deserves my preparation. So across our district, we're making a concerted effort to make sure that learning is student-centered, so it reflects students' interests, priorities, and the identities of our students, that it's relevant, that it's connected to real-world issues and problems, and that it's authentic, that students have the opportunity to actually see how their leadership and their concerns, the observable effect that their leadership has out in the world. We believe that we owe it to students to create those conditions. And we have countless examples of how we're trying to make this a reality in the schools. But tonight, Allie is going to talk with the select board about some of her efforts. So Allie successfully, she's currently doing an independent study with me at, uh, she's at Hopkins Academy, again, I'm in the district office. And her plans and her goals, which connect to her independent study, She'd like to study environmental policy in college and pursue a career that allows her to make a substantive and positive difference in environmental policies and sustainable practices. And as part of her work in her independent study with me, she's learning how to engage communities in collective action in order to achieve ambitious goals, particularly around environment, the environment, environmental policy. She has successfully, within a month of working with me, wrote uh, a grant to the Grinspoon Foundation and secured $5,000 uh, through the school department 
to put on something called the Cooler Communities Expo, which encourages residents throughout the town to come together and to assess their own individual kind of practices and their own individual footprints and consider ways in which they might reduce their individual carbon footprint. She has about six slides to talk to the select board about what it is that she's organizing and again that she successfully secured funding for so good job first grant out of the gate and it's funding and uh, so she'll explain a bit about that and then before you leave I would also love your contact information because if you have any interest in um, participating in this effort which will happen in the spring we would love to have all the help that we can get. Allie Markowski. Yes, I didn't model a good presentation skills then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Mr. Phil, as it says here, so it's an energy grant program. It's basically to help uh, reduce carbon emissions to carbon footprint. Did you say Yep. All right, so how it works. When I was informed that there was the opportunity to help co-run this, I was very eager to go for it. And so Cooler Communities targets these five issues, which are reducing waste, adopting a lower carbon diet, reducing transportation-related carbon emissions, choosing cleaner energy, and educating the community on how to become more energy efficient. Through those five goals in different areas throughout Western Mass, so we would have one of the Berkshires and one in Agawam. They have these big expos where students come together with their own projects and present to the community different environmental issues. And so far, we have, I, uh, as of the moment, at our school, between the elementary school and our school, we have a student-run environmental club, a club focusing on the recycling, the elementary school is working on eliminating single-use plastic cutlery. There is a group of third graders at the elementary school who are very eager to try to get rid of the plastic straws. And this past, I think it was September, there was a student-run informational event um, regarding the effects of climate change. With all of this interest, we're hoping that student participation will be high and they will be willing to do get their projects connected to this. So now that the grant has been accepted, we are hoping that we're like willing, sorry, sorry, we're going to be moving on to our next step, which is finding these projects. So far we have a group of ESL students, three different fifth and sixth grade students from the elementary school who want to do a project on fast fashion and why that is bad for the environment, how it's basically saying like it takes 40 gallons of water to create a new like brand new t-shirt something like that just saying how it wastes so much water and the carbon emissions specifically and then our there's an AP language class at Hopkins who is interested with their TED talks regarding um, the environment they want to present that to everyone at the expo as well as different environmental science classes and clubs between the elementary school and our school so with these projects that will be set up sort of like a science fair and people will come around look at all of that and then before they leave they will fill something out called the um it's called a carbon tracker right? yeah it's so a pledge like the carbon that. tracker so you basically you make a pledge and it helps like us track it's more of a personal thing than anything so it's sort of i think it's on the next slide actually yeah so here you fill something out just basically different things in your household like how much just different household things that you use like how much you use your lights how, how much you use your lights your television your water that kind of thing and obviously you're not going to get like the exact amount so it's sort of just approximate but by doing that, it goes into the carbon points estimator system, which is not fully developed yet, but it should be developed by the time we hold our event in May. And it, like it says here, it helps prioritize what these different things are and what seems to be like, what would be most important. So if you were gonna cut something down, what would be seen as like the most important thing to cut down on, as well as just comparing all of the commitments that people make and the pledges that people make.
townwide and individually, so you can see where you're at and where your community's at and where you can improve. So basically, that is what the event is, and hopefully we're going to have this sort of like a follow-up afterwards, maybe a month or two after, which can help us gain more money. So with the follow-up, we get in touch with the people who decided to make pledges and uh, say, oh, how's it going? What have you tried to do to make this change? Or is there any way we can help that kind of thing? Let's just keep it going. And so it's not just a one-time event thing. So it's something that sort of like stays in place and it's, can try to be like implemented throughout the town for hopefully a long period of time. I like and I have one thing that was on a slide, but I just want to underscore it. So in addition to students are researching these topics and bringing just some of their research projects to the expo, but also a big part where potentially the select board could be helpful or townspeople. It's also about inviting predominantly local vendors or anyone, people who might be able to provide information or or educate people about services that they could offer, ener home energy audits, the opportunity for solar, what's available to people if they're interested in reducing this. A big, in terms of uh, a low carbon diet, that's not to imply everybody runs out and becomes a vegetarian, but especially in a place like this, yeah. eating locally is, is tremendously important around mm -hmm. that. So our, our local farmers can just, just consciously eating locally is a, is a good, step to take. Um, so it's also about inviting uh, vendors and coordinating those vendors and so people have the opportunity to get educated and access information about what individual actions they might be able to take. This is really interesting because um, Cooley Dickinson, who is now part of Partners, has done an initiative on these type of uh, things and I just had an email um, where our cafeteria and it's uh, Mr. Weiss Heel's husband, mm -hmm. who's our uh, manager, he's our head person um, there that has done a lot of initiatives in the cafeteria, including foods where people want a burger. Well, now their burger is going to be mushrooms and hamburger, so that you're not getting just all of that. You're using other uh, alternatives to just meat itself, and and it's it's been interesting just reading it today actually that. Um, the things that they're doing. I could send you that email if you would like to just see what they're doing and uh, they're going to try to do other initiatives also over there with uh, solar and parking under the solar like uh, Molly was saying that UMass does over there. So there's a lot of a lot of good initiatives out there today too. So Ellie, what can we do to help you? Um, I'm not really sure yet. We're sort of <laughs> We sort of just wanted to present the information. I mean, if they're from definitely vendors, if there's any like ideas for vendors or possibilities. You have a question? Uh, so I had a question. You mentioned the carbon footprint um, calculator, and I was wondering when we were just talking about it, we're trying to find out what the carbon footprint is of the town. Is that individual people's carbon footprint? Yeah. 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 yeah that's so that's under development now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That should be ready by May. By May. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because it does seem like a connection that makes sure. sense. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I can add what some, for example, in Agawam, Agawam School District had a Cooler Communities Expo. In that case, they have a mayoral form of government, Mayor Bill Cipelli, um, they adopted a resolution just in support of the Cooler mm -hmm. Communities Expo. I believe that we sent a copy of that There's to Jennifer. And yeah. it's just on, a sample. If of you want to minimize, you can open it up to show people. Yeah, I was um, going to say, we can, that's easy enough so for just us to do. As, as simple as yeah. a statement of endorsement, as Ali said, if you mm -hmm. have so ideas about um, about vendors that could help people, um, just connecting people with, with uh, ways in which they might be able to evaluate and lower their carbon footprint if they're so inclined, and of course, just uh, expressing support for um, our students who will lead this. I mean, Alex saying co-run, let me tell you guys, run, run. Mm -hmm. So if a <laughs> vendor was interested in presenting there, like setting up a booth or whatever, how, who would they contact or who would they? Probably one of us. Yeah, they can start with me and then okay. I can, I can just filter Best out Best to get start with yeah. you though yeah, yeah, yeah. for this, okay, yeah, yeah. Hand out her school email, but mm -hmm. yeah. 
It's okay. Like, there's no exact date for the event yet, but it's going to be in the spring sometime. We're at May 21st right now. We're having a lot of conflicts with spring sports and different trips going on in May. There's a lot going on that month. But right now, May 21st is the date that we are looking to get confirmed. And when we have that, we'll make sure the select board has it also. So the elementary students will participate. They are some of our, including our high school students, our elementary students. If you need some folks to rally behind you in environmental causes, go to Hadley Elementary. I can't get out of that place without being handed a petition. <laughs> <laughs> and if the like the paper was watching this or something like that, right absolutely. Now, maybe they should contact absolutely. you, yeah. and me, and yeah, absolutely. Maybe write an article about this or absolutely. something along those lines, and yeah. gain some support. So. Okay. Just in case Scott's watching. Just in case. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If the select board were to go to a conference where there are a lot of vendors, if many of them are green, would that be of help to get that information yeah. to you? Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think we yeah. can commit to fanning out at the trade show in a couple of weeks at the MMA conference. <laughs> and of course, we want anybody who can be helpful, regardless yeah. of their presence. We also really want to support our local businesses too. So yeah. if we are not aware of folks locally who can provide information or services, please let us know. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, uh, in the spirit of the kids putting themselves forward, I think it would be nice for the select board to, to uh, vote on a resolution of some kind. But obviously, uh, Agalons doesn't exactly work for us. Um, but we could probably craft something that would be mm -hmm. Hadley appropriate, unless mm -hmm. anybody's okay with it. Yeah, I think that'd be a great thing to do. Have you approached a mother's club at all? We have been in touch, okay. yes. We just haven't asked them of anything yet. We sort of just sent out an email to the diff different organizations throughout they the town. They were involved 10 years ago or so with recycling and paper and mm -hmm. That's right. they're documents. They're and their electronics. Great. Well, thank you so much for coming and presenting this. It's really exciting. So, thank you for your time. Great job, Sally. I don't know if it was your first time doing a PowerPoint presentation, but great job. <laughs> <laughs> everything going on. I think so. this slide board expects me back on the 22nd. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Have a nice day, everyone. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thanks. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Thanks. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, we're just going to pause for one second so Jennifer and. Oh, really? Okay. Hey, Christian, we have a capital request for next year. Can we get one of the ones that come out of the ceiling? <laughs> <laughs> no. That explains it. That's right. That's going for a moment. Actually, I have, uh, I have asked uh, Hadley Media to look into a smart board for the world. They're going to come here on Friday. Well, we are also thinking of maybe making a meeting room over in the Goodwin, too, in the next couple of years. So, yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not too that. smart. Yeah. Or it's, 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 double smart. it's too much intelligence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> too, too much smart. The school has. They have the yeah. smart board yeah. thing, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Um, all right. Next on our new business is resignation uh, at CPA. Randy Iser has decided to step down from his role at CPA so he can focus uh, on his role as a oh man, town moderator. moderator. Thank you. Um, and so I believe this seat is one the select board. Mm -hmm. um, a point, yeah. mm -hmm. and so we could just announce tonight that we have this opening on CPA for appointment of select board. If people are interested in submitting their um, their interest, then just write an email to the select board, and we can take it under advisement. I don't know if there's anything else you want to say about that. Yeah, just Randy. Just Randy's, just Randy's right. Yeah. 
Any, anybody want to say anything about that or good? Okay. Thank, thank you for uh, yeah. volunteering. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Randy, for all your time on that and for being town moderator now as well. Um, then we have a direct local technical aid grant solicitations. Uh, so this is a PVPC announcement for an application for the DLTA grants. It's due on January 17th, 2020. Last year, we used this funding for the, um, I definitely know it was the, the housing, um, housing review, solar, solar um, safety, safety, um, and the score. Yep. Uh, uh, financial policies. Okay. Yeah. This is due on Friday, the 17th. Yeah, Next they week, pushed back weeks. that uh, deadline. I got an email the other day, so now it's uh, December, uh, January 24th. But it's not much time to figure out what to ask for, is it? So what, they, what they'd like to do is something regional. Right. So in the past, we've done a street light study with the town of uh, Sunderland under a DLTA grant. Uh, we did um, solar model bylaws with a bunch of towns under uh, ELTA. Um, these grants tend to be small in scope, uh, about $5,000 to $12,000. Um, so if you have ideas about what could be regionally applicable that uh, could be done for, for a short amount of money. Uh, the laser fish we did, that was a different program. That was a different that was program. Under the that was Commonwealth. Tens of thousands of dollars, yeah. I mean, one thing that has come up with our housing is, um, um, I don't know if this would be applicable, but a map of, and this is kind of under the planning board, but just a map of how much uh, uh, transfer of development rights, land, how much do, how much of an inventory do we have for TDR? Mm -hmm. Um, so if we had development going on in one part of Hadley, can we transfer development rights to another part? And what's that inventory look like? Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's something that would fall under this um, purview. Yeah, it's something that I've talked about uh, with the bottle solar bylaw, if we could do solar TDR mm -hmm. uh, so that we would be able to preserve more agricultural land for every solar panel that's installed. Uh, so they're definitely looking at that. I think at a minimum we should reapply for the solar model bylaw, mm -hmm. regional DLTA, uh, because the smart regulations governed uh, promulgated by the net Commonwealth uh, are so dynamic and change all the time that we're going to have to stay on top of that. So I encourage that that be one of them. Mm -hmm. um, what about um, inspection? I'm just thinking of the things that we have that are going for some of the state of flux. We're having some infrastructure related conversations with Amherst, right? University um, is, inspection services. Is, is regionalization of sewer or anything along those lines something that yeah, looks like that kind of. Yeah. I'm not saying we're doing that, but a study of what that would look like. Yeah, is there anything that we could apply for that would give us better information mm -hmm. to help make those decisions? You know? Yeah, uh, something along those lines, or even, um, I don't know, is there any way we could use it for infrastructure improvements, uh, partnering up with the you know, Amherst or Northampton of, mm -hmm. as far as, I, I don't know, anything to do with Route 9 or traffic or something mm -hmm. along those lines that yeah. maybe help traffic flow better. I don't know. That yeah, we've, we've done a study on street lights. Yeah. So we could do a study on roads, drainage um, that's um, multi town, um, particularly given that uh, our traffic pattern in Hadley seems to be affected by what's happening east and west on Route 9 right. in other towns. So just like the Bay Road, South Maple Street, the kind yeah. of the, the cut across for you know getting through town at rush hour, things like that, or mm -hmm. you know, or we can do the utilities talking with surrounding towns. Any of those are really good ideas. I don't know which one. Yeah, those. even I see regional board of health services, yeah. and maybe that you know just the inspection part of the <coughs> role and mm -hmm. trying to 
Well, since we are here, changing so. the inspection methods yeah. in the future, maybe that would be the, the best use of it to, to see what our options mm -hmm. are before, yeah. before we actually pull the trigger. Yeah. Yeah. And you well, can, you, can, you can have many bites Tiny. at the apple. You know, we don't. We're not stuck to one application. We could do five or six applications. Oh, all at once. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, so why don't we compile a list and bring it to the next meeting if we think of any ideas. Mm -hmm. We can email them to David or myself and then kind of so look at that So we're meeting on week. the 15th and then this is due on the 17th. Yeah. So we're on the 24th. 24th. Yes, yeah, yes. Push back the deadline. And it's a one-page application. I can, I can knock them off in half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> On so a Sunday, right? <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to say, name that tune. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> In one note. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Any, anything else? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Bay Road Bridge, 75 complete percent complete plans for Mass DOT. So, oh, that's those are the plans. Okay. Ah, that's what I was looking for in the email, but I didn't. didn't there was not the email, the, uh, the board docs here. There was no way. I'm There's sorry. no yeah. electronic version of them. No, yeah. they didn't no. provide an electronic version. And I tried to think about scanning, but. <laughs> yeah. We need the planning board scanner for those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so did those they, are the plans. Did they do the engineering on a water crossing or no? It's all in here. <laughs> no, they did it though, or did we do uh, it? No, we have to do it. We still haven't done it yet. Uh, we have somebody on, on contract to do it. Did um, Senator Comerford find anything from the meeting as far as trying to delay the project so it's not in, at the same time as the Route 9 reconstruction? Or We're still working on that, and that's, that is definitely a concern because uh, I found out that the 75% complete plans for Route 9 are also, are also almost ready, so yeah. mm -hmm. um, we're going to have to do a lot of shoving and pushing. Uh, it was part of our conversation with the University of Massachusetts yesterday is that it's in nobody's best interest to have both east-west uh, throughways uh, impeded by const active construction. So um, it's something that we definitely want to talk to Mass DOT. And I think that you're absolutely right getting Senator Comerford and Representative Kerry involved in it now. Involved for sure. Absolutely necessary. And have you been uh, going to the Joint Transportation Committee meetings, Chris? Those yes, because yeah, and some of those they talk they, about they've been, this they, scheduling. Yes. Yeah. But recently, maybe because of the holiday, they've been postponing the meetings. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we have another one coming again on the 14th. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's some just well, sometimes they, well, they might have more visibility on these. Yeah, well, sessions. Three sessions and postpone the game. So. Yeah. Okay. So no conversations there as far as uh, the, the the schedules and no. funding and all that. Okay. All right. So, so, so any action items yeah. from this, or? There's no action items for tonight. This is going to take a long time yeah. for Mass DOT to implement. They have to do land taking, surveys, uh, environmental permitting. Um, we're not looking for, at the earliest, bids would not be ready until December 2021 for the Bay Road project. Okay. And are, is, do they have a... Uh, a stakeholders meeting after the 75 percent? No, they do not, and that's something that we're pushing them to, to okay. do. Is that, that, uh, we've, we've asked for them to have a meeting, and they've been hesitant. Uh, I've said that's unacceptable for a project that's going to have such an impact. So, um, they're, but they're saying, in, in what I've just scanned through here, that if they're going out to bid in 2021, and they're planning on doing Route 9, 22, 23. Uh, if they're only going to bid in 21, then they're going to do the project in 22, possibly, not 21. They're not going out to bid until till the end of December. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. 
So you're so looking now at 2022 yeah. for them to do Bay Road, and they're talking about doing out here yeah. 22, 23. They're not even sure on that. So hopefully they'll push Route 9 back to 23 if they're going to do the bridge in 22. But you know, at that meeting, uh, District 2, when I had asked them if there's any way that they could, because it's been done on a state level, mm -hmm. to put an incentive in to get this done beforehand, before they attack Route 9, and put some kind of incentive in to whoever is awarded the bid mm -hmm. to push it along and get it done. Because in the past, the South Hadley crossing and a bridge they did, they were perfectly capable of getting it done in one summer, mm -hmm. believe it or not, yeah. along with uh, our past representative put a lot of pressure on them to get it done. Mm -hmm. For some reason, MassDOT doesn't believe in incentive contracts, even though they're common in everywhere. It else works in the everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to get in touch with Dan Carey. Yeah. yeah. I think we really course. need to, to get our reps involved yeah. in this and, and get it done. Yeah. I agree. They're, they're just dragging their feet. And, and April 1st, but you're going to see if the message. If we don't ask them, they can't drag yeah. their feet. So we need to really ask them. You know, April 1st, we're going to see how bad it's going to get when the other end of the bridge is cut off. No kidding. <laughs> Pretty much. We'll yeah. all be going down the bike path yeah. on our bikes. <laughs> <laughs> Leave the way, Joyce. Yeah, like <laughs> <laughs> that bit. Some of us have to get to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I do have a rather large parking lot. I can, you know, charge people for parking Park there, and then you can rent oh, a bike nice. to go over there. Yeah, <laughs> so you're parking. I think yeah. I have a garage in the center. Oh yeah, you have a garage right there. We have extra Possibly spaces at the senior center. center. Oh yeah, the senior center. There are all those parking spaces. Extra <laughs> income for the town. I got a bunch of old bikes that just need tires. <laughs> yeah. So this, this is all a hypothetical and anecdotal when we're yeah. talking about a future novel. That See, we're going like green already yeah. yeah. and we don't even know it. <laughs> this is what the select board paves the way. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's follow up with uh, Dan Carey and Joe Comerford. See if we can get them involved. And yeah. I mean, it seems like us being a squeaky wheel with DOT, we only get so far, but it seems like uh, Joe Comerford has been in communication with them about the sidewalks and different yeah. things. So, yeah. you know, good. at least we have a contact there. Are we good there? Any other mm -hmm. comments on it? No. Okay. Accounting services. How, so we were going to sign with Eric Kinscherf and... So the three action items here, yeah. we're only going to be able to do two tonight. Uh, okay. uh, we have not had the chance to sit down with uh, Eric Kimscher to work out a long-term agreement. Um, we have the outlines of that and feel comfortable with moving forward with that program, but that face-to-face -face meeting just hasn't happened. But we do have Mary Erickson, mm -hmm. who has signed an agreement with the town of Hadley to provide basic accounting services uh, starting today and going on until um, June 30th. Um, and we would like you to um, take a vote on that, uh, the, that agreement tonight if we could. Um, but we also need to formally dissolve our appointment of jo Justin Cole of Bay State Municipal Accounting Group as the town's accountant and to designate Mary Erickson as the town accountant. This is important for the assessor's work that needs to happen right now. I'll make a motion that we terminate our relationship with Bay State Municipal Accounting Group as the town of Hadley's accountant and immediately appoint Mary Erickson as the acting town accountant. Second. Any further discussion on that? Since they were already done it for us. Yeah. Um, if there's any pending work, we, we still work out of that out independently with him so yeah so we have a little bit of follow-up with him i just want to make sure it does dissolving doesn't mean this is a formal designation mm -hmm. um but uh he has dissolved his relationship with us yes so we have we have some residual work that needs to get done we're working hand in hand with uh our account representative through the 
Division of Local Services, David Gozeman. Uh, he's working on the final uh, certification mm -hmm. of free cash. We have some estimated numbers which we can share with you if you wish those at this point, but it would be better if we had the certified numbers. We're also working on the Schedule A, which is the end of year for fiscal year 2019 that has been submitted in, to Gateway, but uh, we haven't seen Mr. Guzman's okay on that right. Schedule A at this point. So we're still doing a little bit of work, but in order to keep the bills flowing, the payroll process, um, the other issues that we need to look, uh, deal with in terms of getting the audit going, uh, we're going to need the services of Mary. Mm -hmm. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And so that was one item. <coughs> or that was two items, basically. Is there anything else we need to do? Yeah, so there's three. So we're not ready for our kinship right yet. Now, we're, yeah. we're, we have Mary on board and we dissolve the relationship with Bay State Municipal Accounting Group. And do we need to execute a contract with Mary? Yes, yeah, so we, have, we have one right there. Sorry. And has this been reviewed by Ed or? Yeah, great. Been reviewed. I just love that Ed's there. making <laughs> sure. <laughs> but we have an Ed. <laughs> Te technically, she's a vendor, so she wouldn't fall under human resources areas, but still. Okay. Still, still get that. It's yeah. still considered best practice to do that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Especially when you get to contracting this, right? Right. This has been. Uh, has been one of our standard contracts. I've seen it. I've seen other names and, mm -hmm. and dates in the blanks. So we did adapt to the certainly the services and various terms of it. Uh, to us, the most important part is that attachment A, the scope of services in right. the back, and uh, that's. Mm -hmm. Thank you both we'll for seeing us through this process. It's been challenging. So thank you both for doing what you can to make headway. It's been an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> we have public safety complex emergency generator on the agenda but we're going to hold that for next week uh, when the fire chief will attend and we'll talk about that um, 2020 renewals uh, we have businesses that have submitted and some that have not submitted uh, Jennifer, what do you need to, us to do? Mm -hmm. Guide us through this. Well, here. actually, I'm going to ask you to vote on businesses listed here. Okay. Um, believe it or not, I wrote the businesses who have not renewed earlier because you know we prepped the agenda, and I should have removed that. But it turns out having a late fee is really beneficial, and who knew? Who knew? <laughs> everybody's turned in. Everybody's paid their bills. Um, there's nothing outstanding. Um, this is a full and complete list of your licensees. So everybody's they, they paid. Everybody's paid. Nobody owes any outstanding invoices to DPW or anything like that. Everybody turned in before December 31st. That's still 30 days later than I asked, but I'm not chasing anybody in January, so I'm taking this as an amazing success, and thank you for implementing the late fee. It did seem to make a very large di di uh, difference. Great. So if you wish to accept the uh, ones that are listed here, do, do I need to read them? No. No. Okay. Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Senior Center Library and Fire Substation updates. Um, who wants to start? Li library checking along. I think the visual says it all. We've got lots of steel. Um, and we have our next library building committee meeting on Monday, I think. Monday. Um, so we're on to the, um, some of the interior decision making all of that process and then the solar uh, initiative to try to fundraise for solar panels is still underway and I know there's um, a group really kind of pushing to keep that alive and get as much interest and press as possible on that. 
Senior Center, Jane, I have not been at the last three I'm meetings. I'm pleased to report we have meetings. no change orders to present to you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Things are moving along smoothly and quickly. We're very pleased. Looking at end of April, early May. Mm -hmm. And assume that you automatically take care of our rental agreement with Most Holy Redeemer because it was for a year initially. And it will be longer than that. We were April 1st when we moved in. We yeah, so it rolls over from month to month. Right, so, okay, yeah. great, fine. Right. Should we notify them but at there, all? There's a notice in there. We should notify them, and that maybe that's one of the things that we should uh, bring up in the coordinating meeting on the, uh, January 22nd. Just to make sure that probably another month you figure. Or? I think just one more. One, one month, yeah. Okay. Yeah. If things continue, move on. I would just make sure that we do a, a month from the projected completion, a full month after that, just because there, there may be some moving lag period and set up time period. And we have so few things we're moving. I just don't want you to be without a spot. If we, I hear you. Uh, <laughs> I thought we happens. could put walls in here. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the telephones and the cable and all, yeah, this, all so of that. Make sure it's all working. Yep, yep. We're on that. It's really nice having an OPM that coordinates all that. Yeah. I, mean, I think as a, as a homeowner, what you have to do when you move, and now you're looking at something extensive, like a building like this, it has different lines coming in for different things, and how many lines and what size are they. He's got it. It's all good. Yeah. So the town, he's worth the money the town is paying. I just want to say that. Fire substation? Yeah, I have a couple of change orders. Uh, so let's say one I need a signature on because it's $11,007.78. And it's for the two pole whites at the entry to the driveway that need to be added for safety. So it comes to 11000 as I said, $7.78. So what number is it? Just read the number just so you know. Uh, number 9R1. Okay. They're uh, two. Go ahead. They're going to be permanent mountain, mountain poles yes. in the yard, yard lights, right? Yeah. Yes. And they've done all the... Uh, they are the LED. Yes. I will just so move when to I that. When I out, I got all of this, so if you'd like all this <laughs> material to read, I'd give it to you. Um, but that's, you know, it's got the size of the lights and what it's going to look like, and um, they're lithium lights, so there's all, all these... D sizes a. I mean, there's. Oh yeah, a lot of info there. A lot of info there. So, so I'll so move that motion. Just have a second. My only question is, you said lithium lights. Those are the non-LEDs. Well, let's see. There, there were several that were added here. Let me see. Right. Do you mind just seconding it? Just second, second discussion. Yeah, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Does it say on the front there? Sometimes he puts it there. Yep. And that says LED there. Yeah. This says lithium white, but I'm not sure if that's the specifications on that. Uh, three quarters of the way through, it says LED. LED. G series LED. This is, uh, this is just the. Uh, oh, did you get that packet too? I can't. Thank you. I'm going to make my roll in there for But how about the one with the light, the light you had in on? He has it there. It's not with Right there. Okay. What's that say? LED. LED. It's an LED. It's an LED. Yeah, I just didn't want to make sure we're putting things that are going to cost twice as much to operate if we're buying some new no. things. Oh, yeah. We're good. <laughs> Put that back in your packet in order. <laughs> oh, sure, right. Oh, they're right down on the street, too. Yes. So are they just shining on the fire station driveway or are they illuminating the road there as well? Like the intersection? Well, probably the beach. Both. Both. Okay. Yeah, with the glare from the road. Are, are we putting in a red light there? No. No, we're not. Okay. I know we talked about that at one time, I feel like somewhere along the way. Yeah, you're talking about a flashing red flashing. light or something? Like yeah, yeah, to we stop traffic when there was an emergency. We're doing, but we're not going to put a light, okay. light in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah so that's good to have. Fire, uh, fire station or something, two fire station signs there or something. Yes. Back, back so There's going to be one on the, on the front and then, you know, um, maybe approaching. Yeah. I don't know how many feet it is, but 
Yeah, I think there's a... Chris, you don't know how many feet uh, for a fire station? From? Um, Coming down the road, approaching a fire station, we can put whatever feet we want on it. In terms of the light? Like, no, 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 just a sign, a sign that says approaching fire station. Yeah, we go, we, you sh because it's fire station, we have to do a thousand feet. And then 500 feet. Thousand? Yeah, and 500 feet. Approach. No, 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 no. You're talking about the. No, the just, sign. A, just a sign approaching fire station. Yeah, you have to give them enough, enough space. Mm, I, I thought it was 300 or 500 feet. Can we look into that? Yeah, I, we'll, we'll have to check. 500 it. feet, 1,000 feet, 500 feet, and then. No, I don't believe that. No. Well, I. <laughs> That's Why okay. don't we ask right. our DPW? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I, think, I think you should look into it. Yeah. yeah. Can we just and look into it and see what we need? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Confirm. Okay, so all those in favor of this change order, <laughs> not, what was it, 9R1? 9R1. 9R1. Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Now, the other question I have for you before we go on to these other ones um, they're under $10,000, each one of them. So my question to you is, if each one of them is under $10,000, and we took it before the finance part of the committee, and we agreed on them separate motions, it doesn't have to be $10,000 total since they're separate ones, correct? It's $10,000, up to $10,000 between meetings is what, select board meetings is what we agreed on. Between select board meetings? Yeah, yeah. So if you had like a five of them that are $2,000, you're good if you had Three of them that are eight thousand. We we should vote on them here. Okay. Well then yeah. We could do that tonight on these then, because um, we took them individually. So mm -hmm. you're saying ten thousand in between meetings. In the aggregate. So if I wanted to hold off on one of these, I could till next week. You could because theoretically. We've already voted on them. Yes. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Zero. <laughs> one. So I mean, we just I thought we my would. phone ringing or. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> All right, so line item nine, you um, mm -hmm. it, the, the number is change order 004R1, and it's an additional um, solenoid valves relay panel monitor module and fire alarm work for gas shut off. And so that comes to $7,000, $442.98. Do you want to take them separate or you want to take yeah, them we can together? Yeah, we Motion to approve. And what number was? What number was the change order? It was um, change order request 004R1. 004R1, okay. Mm -hmm. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 And then we have um, line item number 16. Uh, it's to add furring and insulation at the north wall um, at Apparatus Bay, and that change order is 010R2. They found that the back wall needed a little bit more insulation there than what they had planned on, so they're going to add rigid um, board insulation, R25, to the back wall, which they all agreed that they back needed. West wall or north wall? North wall. And how much was that? And then drywall over it. So that'll come to $6,500. Okay. That was never an option from the engineers? They didn't think about it? Or? No, I, I don't think until they actually got in there and saw what the north wall was actually, how it was coming with the wind and stuff in that, in, in that corner. And this is in the garage bay area? In the garage yeah. bay area. Yeah. Okay, so we can just move that one, so moved, mm -hmm. and 010R2. Okay. Second. Second. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And then the last one is line 17. It's for add plywood backboard on all four walls in the data app room. And that change order is 012R1. And that's for $1,260.47. So moved. Second. Okay. That's going to be climate controlled or? Com yes. Yeah. Why yeah. is all I'm saying? No. I <laughs> well, again, <laughs> labor. <laughs> well, again, again, that's a climate controlled room. The rest of the, yeah. the place probably isn't. And yeah. why didn't the engineers catch that? 
That's a simple one. Yeah. Well, we got it still stripped and not done. Yeah. yeah. Better to do it now. All right. All those in favor of that one? Aye. 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 Did, we, did we make a motion on that one? I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. <laughs> Second. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. There we go. Thank you. So did we want to sign that one, David? I signed the one. Oh, you signed the Can one? Can I have it back, it's, I, There's a pile of signed documents okay. right I'll over scan here. it to, to fill in the morning. Okay. Okay, and give it to fill in the morning. I'll scan it to him. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. Yep. And I can sign those if we get them. Uh, the, the oh, other ones. the other ones. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll send them to you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do we want to do first? Announcements or uh, town administrator report? How much overlap? Is, will there be between the two? We think. How about we do? How about we do announcements first? <laughs> would you guys like to speak on the MVP uh, as an announcement? Even though it's not on here, would you like to speak about that at all? Yesterday, that uh, yeah. meeting that was held. I don't know who wants. I was there, so I don't know. Molly, if you want to kick it off, and Chris, if you want to add, or Chris, if you want to mention your comments. Okay, okay, so I'll talk about this. Actually, my like, um, that's what I figured. There'd be some overlap there. <laughs> All right, so we received a planning of $15,000 to um, do the first part of the municipal municipality vulnerability preparedness program, MVP, not most valuable player. Um, so we had an all-day work session yesterday um, to solicit information from Hadley stakeholders as to natural hazards mitigation issues that may be associated with climate change. Um, we went through as many different um, features of the town of Hadley have, uh, having to do with flooding, uh, severe weather, um, uh, and any other kind of damage that might be caused by uh, climate change. And collectively, and we were well represented with DPW, we had uh, fire, we had administration, we had the select board, we had planning, council on aging, conservation commission, um, schools, DPW school, um, who else am I forgetting? Police, That's probably police. police, 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 police were there, That's right. Yeah. Um, planning board or something? Yep, planning board. So well representative and collectively we came up with three priorities which will be prepared in a report. Uh, the first priority is to repair and extend the dike. Uh, second is to replace and upgrade culverts. And the third is to enforce the zoning and other regulations to protect the Connecticut River Bank embankment. Um, Can we pause on that one sure. for a moment? So um, one of the things that was pointed out by the folks from um, the engineering company is that that third one, um, which is the enforcement uh, of, of the rules around the riverbank, is really something that we have a lot of opportunity to get a leg up on immediately um, because it's really somewhat self-inflicted. So um, their their goal is certainly to try to get the money for you know the dike, the culverts, the, the expensive stuff, but they encouraged us to start working on this um, immediately and again as David said there was a very broad coalition of people in the room um, and conservation was very vocal on the topic I think there you know inspections was not there but the suggestion was that we should um, that starting with the select board perhaps we could move as soon as possible to assemble a coalition of people involved with all of the rules, regulations, and enforcement thereof, um, just existing rules, not creating new ones, just but what we already have on the books, pull everybody together and come up with a game plan, um, which would likely, first of all, it would be the discovery and the education of making sure that within the town, uh, government itself, everybody was in agreement on what the rules are. Then how the enforcement should take place and then move immediately to a public um, information sessions, um, specifically inviting property owners um, and interested parties who enjoy the riverbank um, in town and let people know what to expect 
and then enforce. So that it, you know, there's a plan. So it's not that suddenly we have a whole bunch of people saying, what the heck is going on? You know, I've been doing this for 20 years, and now all of a sudden you guys are lowering the boom. So that it, but if we did it in a very systematic way, um, and make sure people understand that this isn't, you know, just the, the mood of a particular select board. This is um, really protecting the town's interests because it very much relates to flooding protections. One of the things that's always bothered me about uh, when we've had to repair the dike in the past, uh, how the uh, Army Corps of Engineers has washed their hands mm -hmm. of it. Um, they're the ones that had actually built the dikes all around uh, the Connecticut River, and then when anybody was in need of anything, they didn't want nothing to do with it. And somehow I feel like they should still be involved with this somehow. And, uh, and the federal programs that are out there, they are doing it in other areas where yeah. they built the dams. And I think that they, you know, we <coughs> should have in other states some contact with them on this as, as long as we're getting into the repairs and washing of the of the levy and things like that, I think it would behoove us to reach out to them again uh, and see what their, you know, maybe their players have changed also from when we uh, did this years ago when we did the repair. Mm -hmm. I know as a navigable waterway, they should have jurisdiction over it and they should be maintaining the banks and the dikes and dams and everything else, but... And that's another good thing that we can bring to Joe Comerford mm -hmm. uh, as, our, as our senator, since she would have some thoughts on that. And of course, Dan Carey, too. I don't know how much he would be able to yeah. chime in on it, but they certainly did help us money-wise when we did repair the dike. And so I think you know it would be who was to ask them again to have this Army Corps of Engineers get involved with it again. Mm -hmm. And he's got he's, um, South Hadley and East Hampton mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that are affected as well. With and, the River. and you know, they're they're involved you know, with other towns, just like we are with the police and the fire now, with mm -hmm. Northampton, with South Hadley, mm -hmm. uh, with the Coast Guard, with the environmental police. They're, they're, they're all doing a patrolling on the river now anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're all working together, so. That's why I say we reach out to yeah. them again. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, specifically this issue is really addressing anybody who perhaps, you know, may be removing vegetation. Um, you know, certainly any illegal dumping and, and the issue uh, that, you know, inspections that the fire department have had relative to, um, The planning board brought called? this up at one of oh, our campers. meetings. Oh, campers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's that big word? And, camper. Yeah. <laughs> and waste disposal, things like that, too. Yeah, that yeah. Or health or health yeah. Department. So could we, could we ask David to call a meeting? You know, again, it doesn't have to be tomorrow, but at least... And it's probably going to have to be a late afternoon or evening meeting because we're going to want Board of Health and Conservation there and stuff too. For strategizing or? Yeah, just to, you know, bringing up the issue that was articulated and then coming up with a game plan on how to approach it. Mm -hmm. Sounds okay. good. I, that. I wonder if there's anything there too with the DLTA grants regionalization, you know, kind of this, I mean, there's a lot of different. Mm -hmm. Um, reinforcements along the river, you know, uh, north and south of us. So I don't know if that's anything we can look at too. That mm -hmm. grant. Well, Find out what other banks you got. Hatfield too. I mean, yeah, you got Hatfield. You got Deerfield. You got Turner's Falls. You, Falls, you, you mean all the way down to Holyoke. Yeah. Montague. Yeah. Turner's. All that area. Um, but I think putting a, like you said, a group together and doing it in a systematic way, so people know what to expect, rather than just laying down the hammer will be a good way to go. Yeah. So and I don't know if we need any bylaw updates. we go back to where we've been <laughs> flooded. Right. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it, there the possibility, I don't recollect, and maybe I don't know my history that well, whether or not other towns um, on up the river has had been, it's flooded as bad as we had. Deerfield? Then. Remember Deerfield that did, big yes. storm? Yeah. Oh yeah. So they got the huge washouts up yeah. there. Yeah. They did move soil back in the farm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> any, anything else you guys want to mention with that? Or? And you've gotten the good feedback during the department head meeting today about the process for the MVP uh, planning uh, session yesterday. So the people who attended I th uh, got a lot out of it and made uh, sure that we understood that they appreciated the bottom-up 
uh, effort of coming to a consensus of uh, what are the three major priorities for the town. But without funding, we ain't going to do any of them. But this, this, is, this puts you in a position of getting the funding in the spring. Mm -hmm. So the 15000 leverages uh, 400000 Just for stuff. Okay. Uh, I'll just do this announcement since it's right here. Is a request for dedication submissions for the 2019 annual report and the Fred W. Oakley Award. Uh, we do this every year. And we're basically just putting the call out for uh, people to dedicate this year's annual report for and the Fred W. Oakley Award. Last year, uh, Dennis Meehan Me 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 was, I believe, the Fred Oakley Award. And I'm trying to think who the annual report was dedicated to. Oh, yeah, the Highway Mothers Club. Yep. Yeah. And there was yeah. one more, wasn't and there? And the Kevin's. Yeah. And the and Yeah. So looking for those dedications this year. And how, how do we get that information to you? Oh. Uh, we can email Jennifer submissions. At info at hadleyma.org. Yep. When's the deadline? Oh yeah, when is the deadline? Valentine's Day. Valentine's yeah, Day. all the re annual reports are due February fourteenth, so Perfect. Um, and then one other announcement. I just uh, David and I. David had a busy day yesterday. We met with uh, UMass yesterday. Uh, talked to them about. Uh, let's see, you know, just them being a real economic engine for Hadley. Uh, had a big influence. Them being here with us being able to achieve our AAA bond rating. Um, we talked to them about housing in Hadley and how the student population uh, from UMass has an impact on Hadley. Uh, we talked about uh, how well our police and fire departments work with, with their emergency services. Uh, we talked to them about uh, just, uh, you know, transition planning on the, the municipal level and how there aren't a uh, big inventory of individuals out there for taking over municipal positions. And uh, they took kindly to thinking more about how they could have curriculum to train people for, you know, town administrators, managers, uh, treasurers, accountants, assessors, all the different functions within town government that uh, there are needs for statewide right now. Um, and then we talked more about uh, you know, trying to get some involvement from the university uh, in our own town government. And they do have a job website we can post internships and those kind of things on. So that might be something we could work on with, uh, with Ed or others if we have needs arise. I don't know if there's any needs in the DPW for people occasionally, but uh, so UMass so could be a resource at least for some mm -hmm. temporary work. Uh, and then uh, another thing too, just kind of stressed with them too, is just our, you know, we're a, run a tight ship in Hadley and don't have a lot of resources and it would be great to have more relation and interaction with them at uh, UMass and have a liaison, but like right now we're kind of, you know, restricted with who we have for resources to be able to interact and do more with UMass. Um, so. You know, that's something I think we can think about too moving forward is, you know, is there anyone out there that would be a liaison for the select board to UMass that kind of knows what's going on there, can be involved with what's happening, what their needs are, and where we can work better together? Because uh, I think that's it. It's, we can have these meetings, but once every year or two years, it's hard to build much of a relationship. So, something to think so can about. Can I throw that one out there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I was talking to Christian about this earlier, and um, but I also had a conversation with, with David as well. Um, that's something that I'd be interested in doing. I mean, I've already got existing relationships over there, and maybe um, working on something like that to you know kind of formalize it, frame it out, 
um, with the intent of ultimately, you know, handing it off. But um, I will have some time coming up after April. So that's a role that I feel like I could play if the board wanted to have a formal appointment to that. And again, you know, for, for whatever time frame you want, or if not, even just, you know, kind of um, diagram it out and then see if there's anybody else in town that's interested too is perfectly fine. So but just to... Would you be the UMass liaison, basically, or... It, exactly, with no authority. Yeah. Okay. Um, it would really be a communication position to... Because one of the things, you know, we talked about is, um, you know, for those of us that have sat through these meetings with the chancellor, they happen once a year. They feel good. I mean, everybody works well together. Um, but then the respective parties go away, and then we all get busy. And then it seems like we're talking about the same thing year over year, and we're having trouble executing it. Uh, as Christian said, it's really just a matter of bandwidth and manpower. So the thought was if we had, you know, one person just kind of playing that role to kind of keep it fresh and in front of everybody, kind of move things along, might be helpful. That's very nice of you to offer this. Yeah. I knew you weren't going to give up all time. <laughs> <laughs> I, was to I, didn't leave down I just had to get there. <laughs> <laughs> but the, but, but actually, I think it just a, came up today. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's great that you do have um, contacts over there, and I think it would, would be helpful. That's a, that's a nice offer. I mean, I generally mean it. It's a, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. a nice offer. <laughs> well, thanks for clarifying that. But and it's also, quite frankly, something that can be done, you know, mm -hmm. business hours. It doesn't involve a whole lot of night meetings, which is what I'm trying to get away from, too. Yeah, so. yeah. So uh, I would be willing to if, if you guys are okay with that. If I like, want to think about that. Can I make a notion that we appoint you as a UMass liaison and just put it in the same, I guess, they expire on the same schedule as all the other Yeah, the end of June. Yeah. Right. We could do it for three years. I don't care. That's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's okay term. with me, too. <laughs> pick, pick a time. I, just, yeah. I don't care if it's three years or just I'll, put. I'll second your motion. Yeah. So that, do you want to do a year, three years? What, how much do you want to get into this? <laughs> we'll just take it one step at a time. Yeah. Okay. Year by year. Let's yeah, go yeah, yeah. Year. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion on that? Or? Pretty good. We should probably have it with UMass. <laughs> yeah, we should talk to them. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, how about start here. Yeah, all in favor? Yeah, yeah. All in favor. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Aye. 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 Yeah. But yeah. Uh, no, I think we need to, we can talk to UMass about it and See if we had some follow-up from them. The too, police so. department talks to the police department all the time. Fire yeah, they have their own. They, they, they have a great relationship, yeah. but I was just fire saying. Fire department does a lot with fire yeah. prevention. Yeah. Right. We don't have anything on par with our level, mm -hmm. kind of in the town with them on that level. You know, I think the emergency services work really well together. So. And even then, I um, participate in the CCC group over there too. So great. Yeah. So keep you guys informed. So one of the things that came up with the chancellor yesterday when we were talking about economic development and our bond rating and so forth, he talked about making UMass a world-class institution in a climate where 20% uh, of the college-age students in New England have gone away uh, and that we're seeing the effects upon small liberal colleges uh, all over the Northeast. Uh, Marlborough College is closed. Uh, something in Bennington also uh, closed. Mm -hmm. Hampshire College we read about in the newspaper. Um, so he's committed to doing what he can to make UMass the best university that he can. That he can. In a parallel conversation during the department head meeting today, we talked about declining enrollment with the schools, and it occurred to me that this is maybe something that could be linked, that we provide good quality of education, affordable housing. Maybe that's a uh, way to attract people to the UMass uh, system, that we're providing the municipal services that they're looking for. Uh, we quickly realized that this was a conversation that went far above the level of the individual department heads, but it's something that seemed like there seemed there was some synergy in what the chancellor was saying and what we were identifying as a need within the, the town of Hadley. Uh, well the thing of it is is that we outpriced ourselves in homes and it's not affordable for everybody to move to Hadley anymore or for people that have already lived here and want to come back here um, the houses have seemed to grow uh, and be oversized and um, you know I, this is I guess what the younger generation is, is looking for 
but we really don't have affordable housing in town uh, for younger people to come and join this community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, that's one of the things that, you know, certainly we need to look at also. Yeah, we're uh, kind of, as a result of the last DLTA grant, the housing um, initiative there, we've worked with PVPC on, we've kind of loosely formed a housing and economic development committee that I think I want to bring to the select board to um, kind of appoint as an actual committee. It seems like there is a handful of people in town that are interested in um, looking at housing and how that's linked to economic development in the town and what we can strategize to do. And in tandem, the planning board is working on this affordable housing trust, um, which, which would be money where when we have the project, like the East Street Commons, where we got the money, they, they didn't pay, put in any affordable units. And so the developer paid uh, a fee to in lieu of putting in the affordable units. So we have that money in a lawyer's bank account right now. That what, what good did it do for other people that live in town that may have wanted to have done that? Exactly. That it, it did nothing. It did it, nothing. It, it defeated the whole purpose that we talked about, about yeah. having affordable yeah. housing. It yeah. defeated that purpose totally. But, but with this trust, maybe with this committee, we can figure out how to do stuff. Like, for people in the I'm community. I'm just talking about yeah. regular houses that people can afford. Yeah, and, right. and we can have use to have that. Yeah. The zo I mean, and again, the zoning, zoning, so people, so zoning people are going to, you know, to the planning board and saying they want to have developments and things like that. I mean, if you look around town, you can go Lawrence Plain or anywhere else, there's, there's property yeah. that are, you know, lots are for sale, but nobody's buying them because they can't afford just the lots themselves. Yeah. yeah. And then you put another house on top of it. Well, and that's yeah. where this whole idea of infill yeah. and zoning changes. I mean, it. But you, you I mean, can't a lot do of things to look yeah. at right now. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm I mean, you can And again, you can't tell people what to do with their own that's property. Right. So right. this is this is the caveat. Everybody wants to make the buck on their property, and I I can't blame them for yeah. that either. Um, well, my hope with this committee too is if we can have someone from the select board on there, someone from the planning board, and some community participation can try to come up with some strategies to work together to work on these issues because I agree you know we have to do something so uh, but we'll see more to, more to be said there uh, okay one well we can do town administrator report you want to do that we just did it are you all done Dave <laughs> <laughs> he is now <laughs> Was there anything we missed? Let's put it that way. Uh, I think I think the one thing that we should talk about is the community development block grant. Oh yeah. Um, yep. So we we'll work. I promised that I'd talk to the select board tonight uh, about this. We're working towards an application which is due on March sixth. You have a public hearing coming up on February fifth, which is a requirement of the law. Um, we're applying, in the past we've applied as part of a regional group, Granby, Belchertown, a couple of other uh, communities this year. I think our metrics are good enough that we can apply on our own for housing rehabilitation. Uh, and one of the ways that we can boost our score is to show interest, people express interest in having a new roof put on or handicap accessible ramp on their porch or grab bars in their house. Um, and we have, in front of Molly, if you can pick up those papers there, we have flyers which are being distributed uh, through the Council on Aging newsletter. It's on the website. There's an advertisement in the Daily Hampshire Gazette. But if you know people who might benefit from from such a program, uh, and it's not for just the elderly, it's all income-based, um, then by all means, direct this to their attention and um, have them fill it out and send that to PVPC at 60 Congress Street in Springfield, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. The more of these we get, the better chances we are in getting the grant, mm -hmm. and that grant would be available this summer. And if people have questions, we're having a, 
a forum at the senior center, which is dated on, date is on that, mm -hmm. people want to just come and ask questions instead of the formal presentation. And this is an income only test, not asset? That's it correct. Like it's not it's assets. It's not assets, so people could have low income sitting out there. Right. It's not going to count. Okay. You could be a, a, a widower who okay. never had much social security, and that's your income. Mm -hmm. You qualify, even though you own 600 acres. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I think the only other thing that I haven't talked about directly in my report is that our revenues and expenditures through November look like they're within our expectations, so we're doing well there. Our most recent report having to do with room occupancy tax and meals tax was very favorable. Uh, those numbers just keep on growing, and that's a result of the new restaurants and new hotels in the town of Tampa. So we're doing very well here. Any uh, word on the uh, North Hadley Village Hall petition? North Hadley Village Hall, we got a unanimous vote out of the uh, Conservation Commission to allow the removal of the ball field from Article 97 protection. Those vote minutes will be uh, approved on January 14th, as soon as I get those in my hands. January 15th, they're off to the uh, legislature to uh, be enacted. So that's the next Conservation Commission meeting. Yeah. Good. And then uh, I just had an announcement for the upcoming meeting on January 22nd is going to be our all boards. So that meeting was kind of a surprise there. Over at Hopkins Cheer Academy. Yeah. <laughs> well, where did that get snuck in on us, huh? That's the meeting. <laughs> Want to keep you on your toes, Joyce? <laughs> yeah. That's more than we and had bargained for <laughs> this month, I think. Yeah, we have a few. I, I wasn't expecting tonight to go quite as long as it has been going, <laughs> but uh, yeah, January. Uh, you threw me off. 22nd uh, is the all boards meeting. The goal of that meeting is just to kind of hear from each board five minutes maximum, kind of what's been going on, what your plans are, and really come to a discussion. I'm hoping at the end how we can all be working in parallel on common goals across the town and see who's working on what and how we can be working together where we might be stepping on each other's toes and get exposure to what's happening in the town is the goal so are we looking um, the agenda to just that though that night rather than that's it okay. yeah yeah so that will be on the 22nd any other announcements where hopkins, hopkins academy. academy at 6 30 our normal so selection seven time. at 7 p.m i'm sorry 7 p.m Because that's the time you do your public forums and stuff. It allows all your committees time to get off of work, yeah. have dinner, do their things, and get there. Okay. I'll bring you dinner. <laughs> bring your dinner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Want one? Have one? Me Announce next. announcements. Yes. Okay. So, I'd like to say thank you to the Hadley Garden Center. We missed that at our last meeting that we had. Um, thanking them for our wreaths for our doors and um, we appreciate them every year and it always makes our town hall look very festive for the for the holidays and thank you very much Tom and Janine Giles um, thank you to the Legion um, I believe Mr. Zabawa brought down to the DPW some treats for our yes. DPW department so we want to say thank you to the Legion for doing that I know they do it on an annual basis and they're appreciative of our uh, DPW department, so they said thank you that way. Uh, we have a few passings this past uh, month. Uh, sorry to say, um, a John Townsend. Uh, our condolences to John's family. And we have a Bruce Morton from North Hadley. Uh, condolences to his family. Joseph Herschel, uh, who is Joanne Knesney's father, our condolences to Joanne and her family. And I believe I said it at the last meeting, but Joseph Kowal um, passed away, and our condolences to uh, his family also. Uh, we had also a Judith uh, Cook Lobo. She's a um, Hadley Town resident also, and so condolences to Judith's family also. Thank you. 
Any other announcements? Say enough. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank just you. Sure. I just want to point out. We're on a feedback. You're close. <laughs>